Los Angeles Clippers are killing it. They've only lost one game and they're blowing teams out by like 20 points in the first quarter. And as of right now, they've looked like the best team in the NBA. And it's funny because you expect the Spurs to be great and they've dropped off a little bit with Tony Parker getting worse and Pau Gasol not being good defensively and then the Warriors are trying to adjust to Kevin Durant and they also need to figure out their center position. The Clippers kind of came out of nowhere almost. And with the Clippers, the big thing for them has been their defense because they are first in the league when it comes to points allowed and they are first in the league in defensive ratings. So that's as good as it gets. And I think with the Clippers, the first reason why I think this is might be because of Luke Richard and Bahamute, who's always been known as a defender at the small forward position. And because of his size and versatility, he can defend multiple positions, and he can defend a ball handler, but he can also defend a wing or a, a forward as well. And I think what the Clippers are probably doing with him is they're just saying, look, it's been a few years now, we still have not found the perfect small forward for us, the guy who can be a defender, as well as the guy who can stretch the floor on the other end. The closest they ever came to that was Matt Barnes. So they're saying, screw it. Let's just be as good as we possibly can be on defense. And Mbamute is a nice defensive player. And then you look at the starting five, you got Chris Paul, who's still one of the best defenders in the league. Redick, who's a nice defensive player. He's not locked down and he's not super athletic, but he's disciplined and he knows how to play within a system. Mbamute again. DeAndre Jordan, who is one of the best defensive big men in the league. At one time, I feel like he was just a rim protector and shot blocker, but he's really come a long way in terms of his pick and roll defense, his help defense, and his overall just making the team better defensively. Of course, it helps that he's one of the most athletic bigs in the NBA. And then there's Blake Griffin, who, in my opinion, always had the potential to be a really good defender given his speed, verticality, quickness, lateral quickness. But I feel like he always was a little bit short, literally and figuratively, I guess, just because he's never been a great shot blocker. But that doesn't mean you can't be a nice defender. And I feel like looking at a guy like Draymond Green, who's a bit shorter but really built and can move around the floor well, I always said to myself, why can't Blake Griffin be that? It seems it's happening so far. Because Blake has stepped it up in terms of just not blowing assignments, being able to stay on anybody he gets switched to, the type of things that really make you a quality defensive player. Providing help defense, I mean if Blake and DeAndre with their athleticism can be constantly cutting off guards, switching onto some guys because they are both pretty built and they are athletic, then how the hell are you going to score on these guys, you know what I mean? I guess you could look to like getting CP3 on a big man, I think that's the sort of thing you could attack. But this team's so damn smart when it comes to help defense and all that. They're just damn good. I do wish I had caught some more Clippers games this season, because I really haven't. And it's pretty much impossible to find defensive highlights on YouTube. So, all I know is they're stepping up. The one play that I have seen, actually from their second unit, which I will dive into a bit more, there was a play where... um, It was against the Blazers. I believe Alan Crabb was coming up on a floppy play. And initially, uh, Austin Rivers just stayed with him, so that's a good sign. Then they ran a pick and roll, the point guard with Alan Crabb. And then Raymond Felton and Austin Rivers just switched to the pick and roll. So then the Blazers didn't have anything there. And then Felton's guy ran another floppy set on the opposite side of the floor, and then he stayed with him. Like, if your second unit is playing that well of defense and they're able to switch and defend the pick and roll and stay on guys when they're trying to go around screens that's great and then also at the end of the play I I think someone ended up getting open or something and then like Maurice Spates and Wesley Johnson like swarmed on someone he had to kick it out but then the help rotation from Austin Rivers was there in time it's like defense 101 pretty much I mean Doc Rivers has always been a really good defensive coach so it's nice to see the uh, the entire team really doing that and if we look at the Clippers how they are against some of the other teams in the league I mean the one team that's always been their kryptonite has been the Warriors because they've just not been able to defend them if Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan can have the athleticism and the 
Well, they have the athleticism, but the, the, the smarts defensively to provide the help and switch and all that, they could have a real chance against them because on the other side of the floor offensively, I mean, the Warriors are vulnerable up front, man, and Blake Griffin, he can go off at any time when it comes to scoring in the paint, so there's definitely something there. And then DeAndre, I mean, he's always a, an option when it comes to, like, lob passes or just offensive rebounds because he finishes really well inside the paint. So, no, he's not going to be a guy you give it to in the post, but he's definitely a guy who can finish and catch the ball and catch a lob. So I think the Warriors are definitely going to have to worry a bit about the Clippers. That being said, I do still have some questions about these guys, one of which is, as good as Mba Mute is defensively, He's almost a non-factor on offense, and against the Spurs, there was a play where DeAndre had the ball underneath the basket, and the Spurs just double-teamed him and left him by Mute completely wide open, and he got it to him, and he actually hit the three ball, but that's not been his reputation throughout his career. He's going to have to keep on doing that, because if there's a guy on the floor that you can completely ignore, rhyming accidentally, it creates a lot more challenges with your offense, kind of like how Oklahoma City had to get a bit more creative in terms of having Andre Robertson be more a part of the offense, and they did it through cuts, and hopefully Mbamute can be a good cutter as well. But if he can also be okay from three, that'll be huge. And then besides that, based on what I've seen, offensively they're pretty much running their normal stuff. Uh, Chris Paul with Blake Griffin pick and rolls, Chris Paul with DeAndre Jordan pick and rolls, the horn set that they run that's almost impossible because it results in either a Blake Griffin mid-range or a DeAndre alley-oop. J.J. Redick on floppy sets. Chris Paul isolations that turn into mid-range jumpers. Or just Blake Griffin post-ups. I mean, their offense is not too much different. Well, the half-court offense, the full-court offense is different because, well, they're getting in transition a lot because they're getting so many damn stops. And when you have Blake Griffin and DeAndre who are so athletic, they can get out and run. That's huge. But now let me really dive into the bench. Their second unit is pretty much Raymond Felton, Austin Rivers, Jamal Crawford, Maurice Spates. Here's the thing. Felton has actually been pretty good for them this season. He's had some down years in the past. Austin Rivers has always struggled with his outside shot. Jamal Crawford is an efficiency person's nightmare. And Maurice Spates is pretty much the J.R. Smith of big guys. So I am naturally concerned about this second unit and how they're going to be able to hold up over an entire season. But defensively, they've been good and they are committed to that side of the floor as their defense really hasn't fallen off at all when the second unit's in the game, so that's huge. But hopefully they can uh, just be there offensively, you know, and do it, like, efficiently. I don't expect Jamal Crawford to be efficient, but if they can just keep on keeping on, that'll be good enough. Of course, if someone becomes available that you think could be a someone who can contribute on two sides of the floor, then yeah, you go for it, of course. But also, I did see some of those Spurs highlights, and um, there was a moment when the entire second unit was in the game. I'm not a fan of that for any team. I feel like at least having one starter in the game at all times is good, and I do think they should really stagger Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. I think one of those guys should be in the game at all times because... Of course, Chris Paul is one of the best point guards in the league and probably the best passing one, so he can lead your offense through pick and rolls and and Chris Paul things. I mean, he's CP3, you know what I mean? But also, Blake Griffin, because he's a very good passer as a big man, he averages like four or five assists over the past few seasons, and Blake, um, I think he's a guy who you can give it to at the top of the key, Maybe from around 15 feet, I should say. Kind of like Marcus Gasol, and he can survey everything, and you can have guys cutting, and he can hit someone. I think he could also pass out of the post really well. The 15-foot jumper helps him, too, because defenses have to pay attention to him, which creates more opportunities for his teammates to get open. So Blake's really progressed as a player. I mean, the 15-foot jumper, getting to over 70% as a free-throw shooter... He was a really good passer the moment he walked into the NBA, but he's gone up to another level. And then the defense. Improving defensively is huge as well. And that's really the mantra for this entire Clippers team is that defense. The help, the pick and roll defense, the switching, closing out, and recovery. It helps when you have DeAndre, it helps when you have Chris Paul, and it helps when Blake Griffin steps up as well. 
And I think these guys are definitely a team that the top teams in the league have to care about. I mean, the Warriors are vulnerable up front. Clippers are damn good up front. The Spurs lack athleticism. Blake and DeAndre are the two most athletic bigs in the NBA. So they're really good and they're going to be a problem. My only fear is if the second unit drops off and if Luke and Bob Mute's lack of offense is a little too much. But as of right now, it's going really damn well.